we're happy to bring you a unique interview. Like Bob, the main character in this interview, you may have struggled with undercover sins in your life. Bob Shearer will take you through his life's journey and unveil the solution for freedom from an addiction that is very common and affects both men and women of all ages. This is an opportunity for you to hear how to overcome this addiction that ruins your happiness. Bob, can you tell us a little bit of, of why we're doing this project? <clears throat> sure. I've been through some uh, illness in the last, I guess the illness started right around the year 2000, just 2001, okay. uh, where I became um, um, quite ill with prostate cancer and um, later had to have the um, cancer uh, removed, the prostate removed and um, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way one wants to look at it, the um, cancer had spread from the prostate <clears throat> over a period of time and in about uh, 2010 I realized that uh, it had metastasized into my bones and I was um, in 2010 I, I had been diagnosed as um, uh, having um, stage 4 bone cancer wow. so That's am crazy. I happy today yes not because of the cancer no but uh, the uh, <clears throat> medical experts tell me that a lot of people when they have that situation, prostate and the bones, mm -hmm. um, your lifespan is usually about a year. Well, I'm going into over five years now, so right. very thankful. I was born in uh, Toronto or a, a suburb of Toronto called uh, Islington back, way back in 1944. Uh, born in a family of uh, two brothers. We lived there um, pretty well all our lives okay. until, um, until we all left home. Can you tell us a little bit of, of what your home was like? A little bit of that childhood experience? I usually go back and I can remember uh, quite a few things to about the age of uh, 10. At the age of 10, um, I had some friends that uh, invited me out to a little, um, oh, they call it happy hour. Okay. And uh, a bunch of kids my age, quite a big group would get together on a Friday night and we would have um, Bible reading and games and prayer and okay. all sorts of things and um, I specifically remember that night very well. It was a, a winter night, a cold winter night. I'm happy to say that going back that far I actually gave my life to Christ. Okay, at the age of 10. Yeah. My mother um, um, was ill at the time and um, she was dying of, um, of colon cancer. And um, my dad had, uh, had a good dad, had two, two good parents, uh, good providers and so on. When my mother had gotten um, colon cancer, she at that time had given her life to Christ. And then when I was 13, she had passed away. Life changed a little bit at that time, 13, 14, 15. I managed to... Uh, duck out of going to high school and so I was a dropout. By the time I was uh, 17 my dad thought I would be better off in the army so I joined the army for three years and was discharged after three years, honorably discharged. Um, served all my time in Canada in 1967 uh, actually just prior to 67 a year or so I met my good wife Darlene mm -hmm. um, in 67, summer, fall of 67, we married. I had a good good marriage for about 12 years until I decided I wasn't sure if I wanted to be married anymore, mm. as a lot of fellas do. And when I look back at it now, I think, my goodness, you know, I've, here I've got a very good woman, Christian woman. All of a sudden, I thought, you know, I'm not so sure I want to be in this situation. We had three young children at the time that God blessed us with, a two and a half and a 
seven-year-old. That wasn't strong enough to make me stay put. Um, sometimes when the, um, the evil one um, decides he wants to get back at you and me giving my life back, um, you know, back in um, when I was 10, uh, maybe he was saying, hey, we'll just see how strong you are and we'll, um, we're going to just see how far you get with being a Christian. Um, I, at that point, thought that the grass was definitely greener on the other side. It just wasn't working and I got in with the wrong group and so on. Uh, never got into drinking or, or drugs or that sort of thing. I did smoke tobacco cigarettes for a while. Um, but after a while I gave that up. So it was quite an experience in those early, earlier years. I mean, people are going to be wondering, they're going to say, well, he didn't dr do drugs. Mm -hmm. um, he smoked cigarettes. Well, a lot of people smoke cigarettes. Uh, he didn't drink alcohol. Hmm. What could it be that this fella had a struggle with? Yeah, basically, I was, just so that you know, um, <clears throat> was hitchhiking to a Christian uh, hockey practice in Long Branch. And I got picked up by a guy who basically introduced me to, um, to pornography at 10, at 10. Very immature, my, my folks, my dad in particular, did never, ne never um, really spelt things out for me, you know. He'd throw a book at me, maybe here and there, say, well, read this, this will tell you all about it, you know. And, you know, not in my opinion the best way to go about it. So as a result, um, my opinion is that the adversary got in there and uh, after my decision at 10 and very happy about it and then some of my friends laughing at me and mocking me because of it, it's probably going to say, well, I got other plans for you unless you've got, you know, some good Christian parents, so to speak. My mother was dying. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, she died when I was 13. So I didn't have a long time with her, but um, I did realize she was a, a great Christian woman just before she died. And prior to, to her death, um, she was um, just a mediocre type of life. A, a very good woman, no, no real bad habits, but not what I would say a thriving Christian as she got weaker and weaker and then she passed. I meant to be genuine mm -hmm. in my beliefs and so on, but getting back to the addiction I had mm -hmm. uh, was a real stumbling block for me. Yes. I it was not, it, it, it just seemed I could not get a handle on that. And, and did anyone else know about that sin? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So did you feel like you had support to help you through that stage or was it more at arm's length? Not in a big way, no. Okay. Uh, something like that you kind of keep secret. secret. Yes. Um, you don't tell too many people about it. From what I understand, it's a very, very common problem in today's world. It sure is, yeah. More we so. thought it was bad back then. Yes. At the age of 10, yes. you know, 60 years ago. Yes. Now it's more common with all the media available. Yes, right? yes. So how, and how did you learn more of what Christ wanted for your life? <clears throat> When did you learn more? I mean, you've told <clears throat> us that you're married, then you left your wife. Yes. You were caught up with addiction, and yet you were still very involved with church, right? Yes, I hid the addiction from everyone, including my wife. I feel I did a very good job of hiding it. Um, I would buy, of course, pornography material and, and, and hide it. You know, lock it up under, under key. But you know what? It's uh, it's there, and when you want to fix, you're gonna you're gonna go and find it. And then when you're tired of it, which all addictions you get tired with, and mm -hmm. you know whether it be drugs or whatever, 
um, you got to get something better, something stronger, something more effective, and it's no different when it came to that. So I would be always on the hunt. How did Christ help you overcome that? Well, um, I'll tell you, I felt that by getting married would be the, the solution. Right. Have a good woman. Um, you now don't need to resort to that, but you know what? That didn't last too long at all. And uh, not that um, my wife wasn't a good woman and a good lover. She was. She was a, a very attractive woman. But the porn thing, they make it so, so attractive and uh, so seducive that um, you're just, don't know the word to use for it, but you're... Um, Bound would be a good yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. So this is where we need power outside of ourselves. Absolutely, yes. So how did Christ <clears throat> demonstrate that power to you then? Well, I, um, I eventually um, couldn't live two lives. I um, went home um, one night and told Darlene I'm gonna th I won't be coming back home. Okay. That was in 1979, and um, didn't tell her the reasons. Just that we were having struggles. Oh, when you have something like that, when there's something that's in between, mm -hmm. you can't have oneness. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really never knew the oneness thing as such in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, I loved her, love her, still love her very much. That particular addiction has a, a very strong... Mm -hmm. So how did, the, how did the Lord break that addiction? Well, it's going to bring us up in a number of years now to um, around the year 2000. And I still wasn't back together with Darlene. I still wasn't living mm -hmm. the life. Um, I still hadn't committed my life back to the Lord. And it only took the illness of the prostate cancer when it metastasized in 2010, in around that, that time, right. the fall of 2010, wow. that uh, brought me to my knees. And I said, okay, Lord, you know how long I've been dealing with this thing and um, I'm not dealing with a whole lot of things but I'm dealing with this one thing and um, it has to go there's just no other um, there's no other way yeah there's no, no other option mm -hmm. it's it you're either gonna take it from me like your word says you will and I think all along I've been asking you to help me with it instead of taking it yes because it's like any addiction if you can still have it a little bit kind of have the best of both worlds you know you're going to try and do that well it doesn't work that way no, no. it just simply doesn't work that way so i was i was disobedient all those years and then i got to the point was it the sickness that made, made me want to come to him and to get rid of it? I just knew that that was a big problem at that time. Don't just help me with it anymore, take it from me. You've got to take this thing from me, lock, stock and barrel, totally. Mm -hmm. So that there is abs so that I actually hate it. Mm -hmm. And he did. And he did. And he did. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So it's gone. It's waiting it's a buried. long time for that request. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's buried and it's uh, it's as, he's forgiven me as far as the east is from the west. Thank God. It's interesting that if you were diagnosed with stage four bone cancer in 2010, yeah. and that's also the time where you ask him to take that away. That in he, around that time, yep. That he gave you much longer than one year. That's why when you first asked me, am I happy? How could I not be happy? Yes, yes. How could I not be? Because he's given me all this extra time to get things right, number one. Okay, so how has that evolved? In, what do you mean, how have you made it right? How have things been made right? The addiction is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, it is no more. Mm -hmm. It's not even a bit of, a, of, a, of an issue 
not even a little bit. That so it caused me to get back with my wife and my and my ch well, my children are older now and. Mm -hmm. um, so you're back with your wife now. Back with my wife now and have been for over five years. Yes. Another praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> After being separated. How many? Seventy nine. Thirty years. 31 I believe years. it was thirty one years. Yep. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Miracles still happen. And the addiction, by the way, lasted uh, 51 years. 51 years. It's a long time. It sure is. It sure is. A wasted life. So what would you say that the Lord has done for you in the last five years? Besides helping you overcome, what else has He done in your life in the last five years? He's brought me closer to Him. My prayer life has improved. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on reading the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's why I enjoy guys like uh, Doug Batchelor. Okay. I just turn him on and just listen until I can't listen anymore. I'm just so sleepy. I just got to go to sleep, you know, okay. hour after hour. Yeah. I made an oath to him back in 1967 to be with one woman. And um, if he, if he wanted a one family. Like Bob, many men or women believe that viewing pornography is at worst a private sin with consequences that only affects them. But as Bob, who found out the hard way, pornography is in fact a sin that harms the most intimate of relationships, marriage. We hope that this short interview will help you raise questions in your community, your church, and your family. If you are involved with this very common and yet life-breaking addiction, you can find solutions in the different Christian ministries in your local area, such as Focus on the Family or NewLife.com, or you can go to a church that may be able to understand your problems. God's plan for marriage includes authenticity, hope, and redemption. Commit to spending time in the Word, avoiding deceitful cultural trends and keeping your eyes on the bigger joy and authentic intimacy that God intended for marriage and for life. Bob found freedom from his addiction to pornography, and you can too in Christ. He promises in his word that those who are tired and heavy laden will find rest. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God bless you and thank you for watching. My only uh, concern is that I'm not getting to enough folks to tell them about this great plan of salvation. And, um, but he's going to come when it's ready and the father one day is going to say, okay, son, that's it. We're, you know, I want you back down to earth and um, those that are faithful, um, they're going to come home. Mm -hmm.